Lucy again. <laughs> I wanted to talk about pink today, specifically pink lip products. With Barbie coming up so very fast, I've already picked an outfit, but now I need a pink lip to tie my Barbie look together. I pulled out every single pink lip product I own, and we're going to be going through them together. I always like to start by prepping my lips. Right now, my favorite lip prep is the Tony Molly Lip Jelly Melts. Tony Molly, Tony Moly. Not positive, I don't speak Korean, but I would love to know the proper pronunciation if anyone else knows. Um, for the pink Barbie theme, I have my watermelon one that is abysmally low. <laughs> and this one, the passion fruit flavor, feels a little more Barbie to me right now. So that's what I prepped my lips with today. First and foremost, I have a L'Oreal Color Rich Lipstick in 181, New Intense. It is a nudie, rosy kind of pink, a little more natural. I don't know how much it screams Barbie, but we're gonna swatch her right here. Look at how smooth. Well, let's try it on. I like the way it applies. It's super smooth. I feel like I could definitely reapply it throughout the day and not have it get gunky or dry. Um, we'll see where I land on this by the end. Next, I'm gonna be doing my other nude shade. This is the NYX Shine Loud Liquid Lip Color in the shade Born to Hustle. This is basically very similar in color to the other one. I don't always love how the Shine Loud Liquid Lips wear all day, but we're just gonna try it on for now. I should really let this dry. Ah, yeah. As these start to dry, they always, as these start to dry, they always just start getting like sticky where you can't really speak or put your lips together without it kind of like peeling the product. I don't know if the shade screams Barbie and okay. I've had so many of these. They get patchy when they do start to wear off. Um, it turns me off to this formula a little bit. I like a liquid lipstick when it's not super drying or super flaky. Uh, this one has been nice and it's great for the cost, but I don't know that it's a formula I would choose to wear all day long. We can compare these side by side. And I don't know, the color difference, pretty null. Back to a bullet. This is MAC 559 No Photos, which is my personal favorite shade of their pink. Let's get our swatch. Now this is starting to feel more Barbie. That really bright pink color. I like that. And last but not least, the Fenty Poutsicle Lip Stain in my type, her pink shade. I like to blot the edges of a, of a lip stain, especially one like this where it's glossy and has just a little bit more transfer when it first dries down. Um, but this one also feels pretty good. And here is our Poutsicle swatch right on the bottom. And I'm sure you're noticing that there's not a ton of range in the colors right now. I will say, because I value sustainability above options, I didn't buy anything new. 
These are the pinks I already own and I'm not going to waste money when I know I can find one in my collection right now. So I like to do stuff like this, swatch everything I have. If I really have to make a purchase, I'll find out like 50 swatches later. That's fine. Um, but I don't have any like lighter or cooler tone pinks, nothing too pastel-y, just because it isn't what works best for my skin tone and my personal style. I would have to use it in certain ways to be happy with how it looks. And I like a product that I just enjoy. But those were the lipsticks and lip stains. Since I have a bullet and a liquid of each, I could start with one and kind of like reapply with the other, depending on what's easiest. And now for balms and glosses. So I obviously started with a balm in the beginning, but that was an untinted balm with no cosmetic appeal, literally just hydrates the lips. Um, these are all the balms and glosses that I like most on top of the makeup I have. There is one that I adore that's not in my collection today, but I'll bring it up when it's relevant. So first and foremost, the Holographic Gloss Topper by LA Girl. It's a cheap brand, so, so affordable, but look at this. Absolutely gorgeous. It just provides pink sparkles. So that's on this side on top of the lip stain. And then my other glitter pink option is the NYX Fat Oil, which I bought a while ago. I don't like to classify this as a lip oil because I cannot use it instead of lip balm for the day. I do have to have something hydrating that I reapply underneath it here and there. But I like the formula. I don't feel the glitter as much as in this one. It's not as gritty. It's not as sparkly either, but it's more comfortable. So you kind of trade off depending on what's more important in the moment. Um, I would probably carry both of these in my bag for the day. If I want glitter, I can use this for photos or at the beginning of the day or in the evening when I'm going to dinner. And this can be while I'm eating, after dinner, before drinks, stuff like that. My swatch here of the fat lip oil is... So that one's got a pink pigment on its own with a little glitter. This one has no pigment on its own with tons of pink glitter. Those are the two differences that are most noticeable for me and usually how I kind of classify what I want to use, what I'm looking for. Um, I do like them both. Just because my lips are a little dry after wiping off all of those products in between, I am gonna put on some of this Revlon Kiss Lip Balm. It is SPF 30, which is nice. Because I've been outside a lot. It has a super subtle pink sheen to it, just kind of evens up the lips. And I like to carry it around when I know I'll be out and about all day. The Wet Cherry Lip Gloss by Lime Crime and Cover Girl's Yummy Gloss. So this gloss reminds me most of the Milani lip oils. The strawberry melon shade of those, I'll put one like here for reference. Um, I love it. I went through one of each of those lip oils. I ordered all four when they came out and just one by one went all the way through each tube. They're a fantastic formula. I always wanted more from the same tube. I just wanted it to last just a little longer. This guy, a little bit bigger, a little bit fatter, it will last me a little bit longer. So different brand, but the formulas are so, so similar that I would honestly recommend if you can't find what you like in the Milani lip oil, look at the CoverGirl Yummy Gloss ones. This is the shade, but first a Cosmo. And we're going to 
swipe it on here. You can see that super sheer pink tint, but it has a slight pumping effect, but in a hydrating way, not a drying way. And you can already see just how it like really revitalized what's on this side of my mouth versus this side. I'm obsessed with this stuff. I've only had it for a few weeks, but I've been reaching for it more than almost any of my other lip products. So these two, winning combo. And my final hot pink gloss is an absolute classic. Everyone knows her. Some of us love her. Some of us hate her. The company, I'm not going to say anything about right now. But when I am trying to be sustainable, it matters more to use what I have um, rather than throw away unused product. It does not mean I will ever be repurchasing that product. Uh, so please keep that in mind if you see something from a company um, in my collection. That doesn't necessarily mean I still do support them or that I support actions they've taken. Um, it mostly means that I ended up with it one way or another and it's not gonna get wasted. So right here, we can see the pigment difference out of all of these glosses. This is by far the most pigmented lip gloss I own. I really do like the formula. It's comfortable. The cherry smell is cute and inoffensive to me. And if I just want to reapply one thing, it kind of shifts the color a little bit more towards that super neon warm pink. I, uh, but I, I really love it. It's one of my favorite products. It looks great with this. It looks great under this. Um, and similar to the yummy gloss or the Milani lip oil or the Tony Molly product, I will reach for this every opportunity I have until it's empty. And when it's gone, I will wish that Lime Crime was a better company so that I could still own it. <laughs> But you know what? It's out of my hands, isn't it? These are some pigmented products. I mean, if you don't see the pigment over here going on or over here going on, you will see it here. So the e.l.f. Hydrating Core Lip Shine, which is a balm gloss tint kind of thing all in one. Um, it does have a little bit of color to it, but it's not highly pigmented in my experience at least. You can kind of see right there. It's comfortable enough, but it's really not that hydrating. And I actually find the Tower 28 lip gloss to be a more hydrating product. So if I were to go with these mauve shades, I could kind of balance between one of these two for a gloss, but chances are I'd lean towards this one. Um, I'll be honest, I don't often regret makeup purchases. This one I kind of do. I don't love the formula and for what I like it to do, I wish I had a different shade. This shade is Joyful. And this one, this one is called Coconut. And it's a little bit more of like a, like a wet liquidy consistency, but even so, it doesn't tend to gloop up or stick to my piercings. It's comfortable to wear all day. And in the swatch, you will see how beautiful the pigment is. Look at how gorgeous and smooth that goes on. It may not be 100% even, but look at that. So these are my pinks. Um, feel free to let me know down below what you think would be the best in your opinion, to go onto my face for the Barbie movie. I do love the slight range <laughs> in tones, but you can tell what my favorites are. Right now, if I just had to say off the top of my head, 
I think my purse will be carrying these three products. So let me know what you think. What do you think, Mort? See y'all next time.